Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Genealogy TV. Today, we are going to talk about cleaning tombstones. Should you or shouldn't you? When we come back. Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Connie Knox. If we've not met before, I am a lifelong genealogist and I'm here to help you go further faster factually with your family research. So recently I was out at Oakdale Cemetery working on an episode for uh, my North Carolina Ancestry YouTube channel and it was uh, it was enlightening. We had a great time. I met Eric Cozen who is the superintendent there and while I was there, I asked him, you know, I see people talking about cleaning tombstones and how you're really not supposed to touch the tombstones because uh, they have a lot of history and we shouldn't be touching them. And I know, you know, chalking has, you know, and, and taking uh, pieces of paper and doing charcoal etching over it. You know, some people say that's not a good idea anymore. So... I figure, who better to ask than a superintendent at a historic cemetery? So I said, can we clean tombstones? And here's what he said. Well, cleaning tombstones, there's a couple of things that you have to, have to understand. Um, first and foremost, you have to realize what kind of monument it is. What is the makeup of it? What type of stone is it? Is it marble? Is it granite? Is it limestone? And so forth. So there's only a couple of, of items that would have been utilized for, for some of these monuments. But predominantly it's going to be either um, uh, marble or it's going to be granite. Marble is typically white in color whereas granite is gray in color. The density and the porosity of these monuments it also varies a lot differently as well. Typically uh, marble monuments will actually be a, be a little bit softer, has a little bit more grainy, you will actually almost see a, almost like grains of salt that would be in your hand and it's actually just the, the monument actually just starting to decay after time. So you really want to be careful in regards to what you're going to be doing to this monument and figuring out what is the proper uh, method of cleaning? Most times out of anything, water is your best thing. Uh, sometimes with just a soft bristle brush, almost like a toothbrush type bristle, um, you can wash right over top of this and it will make, make it nice and clean. So, so for genealogists, it's okay to Always come... get permission first. Right. That's, it's not always okay, but it's always okay once you get permission to touch these stones because sometimes they're fragile. Some could be broken, some could be very um, uh, precarious in regards to how it is. So you got to be careful on that because nobody wants to get injured as a result of that. So, But once you do get the permission and so forth, then you can kind of proceed with, with cleaning practices. And typically, less is better. I want to think that I saw some instructions on your website. Yes, we have instructions on there of the do's and, and don'ts. There are some products that you can use. Um, you know, the one product that unfortunately was used a lot was Clorox. Now, Clorox is a no-no. Do not use Clorox in any monuments. If you're going to wash your car with Clorox, fine, but you're not going to do a monument, okay? So stay away from the Clorox products. There is a product called D2, which is actually very specific to help reduce a lot of the algae and buildup and so forth that's here but it is a little bit of an expensive product but it is well worth its weight in gold because once you get most of the surface area here kind of cleaned off with the soft bristle brush and water you can actually apply this product to it and it will help deplete anything else that's remaining within the stone itself now this particular stone has cracks in it yes it has been broken once before if not twice um you know when you're so is that uh should we clean it or no? Yes, it's fine to clean it. You just want to make sure that it's not broken so it's not going to fall over or anything like that or provide any further injury to anybody else. Okay. Uh, but typically when you find cracked or broken tombstones in a cemetery, it's typically because we're in a very treed environment. So, you know, being in, in nature and so forth has its ability to unfortunately be the worst vandal that's in a cemetery. Thank you. There you have it. Eric Cozen says it's okay to clean tombstones as long as we do it properly and we ask permission in advance. So... For your convenience, there's a, uh, a link in the show notes for you uh, for that product that he recommends. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, please do so by clicking on the subscribe button. And don't forget to ring the bell so you get notified of the next time we upload videos. Thanks for watching Genealogy TV.